Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. It has been a while. <laughs> well, um, so yeah, I'm back. I don't know for how long, for this video at least. If you want to know more about that, I will talk about it more at the end. We're making a seamless looping background that looks like this. And I think it's quite an interesting thing because like there are a lot of techniques that you can use in different um, situations because, well, you'll see. I'm going to add some title clips, but not title clips, rectangles. Well, squares, but squares are rectangles, but anyhow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, I will make them both 8 and red and center them. And for the second one, since I'm lazy, I will just duplicate it and then go and change the color. So now I have my two squares. The third thing I want is a background, so I will add a color clip here and white because I like white. And now you can see I only have two tracks and I need three to put my three, three clips, so yeah. And then the order doesn't really matter, I will just put it like this. So my idea first is to have those two squares separate into a cross. And so to do this I will use crop scale and tilt here. And I will hide the top track so that I can see what I'm doing. So on the bottom one, I will go, I don't know, somewhere around here. And I will make the keyframe linear because it's better for what I want to do here. Because I want it to be kind of square and not like moving around, with, which can happen with the smooth. And so the first thing I'm going to do is make it very small. So scale X to 1. And then since it's all the way to the left, I'm going to make it go back to the right. Um, and try to center it somewhere around here, I think, looks... Uh, a bit more to the right, actually. Yeah. Try to remember this number if you can. And then one more keyframe. And now I will put the scale Y to 1 and the scale X to 100. And you can't see what's happening because we're not in the right place. So this goes back to 960. And this needs to be higher somewhere on here. I will try to make it a round number so that I can put it for the next one. And I also want it to be linear and then a final, well it's not final, but a last keyframe here. And this one will go back to the normal numbers. Let's see what that looks like. It should just... Shoop, shoop, perfect. Um, I think I'll want it to be a bit slower at the beginning, so I will just move these keyframes. Then I will go back to my first keyframe and go on my second clip, put crop scale and tilt, see what I'm doing, and add a keyframe. And I will basically do the same thing, but in the other direction. So this will go to 1, and this will go to 8, 10, which is the number we put earlier. Then one more keyframe, this will go to linear. This will go to 100, this will go to 1, this will go to 1435, I believe I put, and this will go back to 540. And now I have a cross. And then I will go to the final keyframe here, and this one should be linear, by the way, so I will put it linear. And here I will add a linear keyframe again. And by the way, you can change the default keyframe time here. And like I keep changing it because sometimes I want it to be linear, sometimes I want it to be smooth, and then I change it. And then the next time I want it to be smooth and like, you see what I mean. So I just, I chose to just go with it. And this will go to 960 and this go to 100. And now I have just two squares going into a cross and back into a square. Beautiful. And the second thing I want to do is have two squares kind of rotating. And the thing about this part is that it will be symmetrical. Although this one is symmetrical as well, I could have done it differently for the second one, but I decided to do it this way. So here I will go on uh, the next keyframe after the last keyframe. That makes no sense, but well. And I will cut the top clip here. Then I will do everything on the green one. So I will hide the top one and I will make my cool thing. So I will go a bit further here, for example. Um, add a keyframe and this one I will want it to be smooth so I will leave it here and I want scale X to be 50 and that's just 
arbitrary. Then I will go a bit further and I will want scale y to be 50. But I want it to go to the bottom. So I will change tilt y and make it go to the bottom. Then add another keyframe and then I want it to go to the right. So I will move it to the right. And then I want it to go to the top. And so I will make it go to the top. Yeah, uh, very original, I know. And I know at the end I want it to be in the center. So I will just put this frame right now. And it will just be like the normal, like the same one as the beginning and stuff. And I'm pretty sure you can copy keyframes somehow. And I keep forgetting how it works. And so it's just easier for me to do it this way. But feel free to do it the proper way. And then here at the bottom, I will add a keyframe just because I want it to be like a bit smoother somehow. So yeah, um, I'm just changing the values a tiny bit and I will see what that looks like. It's pretty good. I just kind of want it to be a bit rounder, the last part. So this will need to go more to the left, I believe, for it to work better. And maybe a bit more bottom. Okay. Way too much to the bottom. Mm. Okay, I think that will be good enough for now. Let's check. Ah, it's fine. And so, once you're happy with the bottom thing, um, you can copy and paste the clip and then you will cut it at the same place as the other one. So right after this keyframe, I will cut it. Remove the top thing, copy this effect and paste it on here. Uh, I will remove the one I already have. Paste it on here. And this I can remove now. And and now, if I show everything, I should have both things moving at once. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So it's moving together, which is not what I want. We're missing one effect, which is Flippo. And Flippo, uh, if you have both axes, it basically, basically makes it rotate 180 degrees. Pretty cool. So I'm quite happy with that and now I want it to make I want to make it a background and to do that you're going to need a new sequen sequence which is a new thing in Canon Live. Well, it's a couple of months old, well more like a few, more like six. Um but it's new to the channel because I've never used it since I haven't posted in more than a year. And so I will make a new sequence by right clicking add sequence. I will call it main, but you can call it whatever you like. And now it's here. And so I can go here and take my sequence one and put it here. And then I can add effects to it and it will affect everything. And so what I want is video grid, um, which is an effect I use quite a bit, actually. I think it looks cool. Uh, and so I will make it like, yeah, a lot of them. Let's say whatever number, it doesn't really matter. What I want to show you right now is how it sadly isn't square. Like there's more space in this direction than this one. And that's because we are working with 16 9th, whatever it's called in English, resolution. And so that's annoying. And I'm not sure how to fix it in a good way, but I know how to fix it in a bad way. So that's what I'm going to teach you. And so I'm going to kind of deform it and then reform it. And I'm going to use crop scale and tilt for that again. And I'm going to use that on master. Master is here at the top of the traps. And I will change the scale X to 177. And that's not a random number for once. Um, that's because that's a ratio between 16 and 9. Or the other way around. I don't remember one of these. I just had to do the calculations, you know, easy. But now it's not more to the right, so you need to move it. And you center it as well as you can. I'm sure there's a good number to put here as well so that it's well-centered. I don't know what that number is, so yeah. Oh, I just remembered something I wanted to make. Well, I'll just show you this thing and then we'll go back to here. And here, now it's all deformed, but if I then add crop scale and tilt, 
to my sequence. And now scale X will go to 56, which is not a random number. And I just clicked on it and I'm very proud of myself. Um, now it's whole more square. Well, if both of these were the same number, it would be square, which I will show you now. Yeah, it's a square. So we will continue this later because I forgot something in the first part that I wanted to make. I want to add some rotation. Since now it's all deformed because of crop scale and tilt, I will go to the master and hide this one because it's ugly. So I will come back here and I want to do like some rotation on both of the clips at once. And so here's the nozzle technique. It's using compositions to move multiple tracks at once. And so I will go here, use composite and transform. And then you can just copy and paste this to the top track. And you need to make sure, well, automatically it will be good because it will be on automatic, but make sure it's either on automatic for the top one or V2, because you want the movements of V2 to apply also to V3, V3. So here, if I go on this composite and transform and I move it, it will move both at once. But if I go to the top one and I move it, it will only move the top one. Yeah, so I want to move them both at once. So right now we are good. I want to do some rotations and stuff. And I know that right now, if I rotate it, it will touch the top and bottom, which is annoying. So I will make it a little smaller just so that I have some room to play with, you know. And rotation at the beginning will be zero because, yeah. But, um, then we have this cross and I like it to start moving at the cross. So right here, I will add a keyframe and do I want it linear? No, I think I want it linear. And then it will rotate until, yeah, here, I think that's good. So, and I will do, make it do 180 degrees. So a rotation during the cross, perfect. Then it separates, and then I want it to rotate again. So I will add a keyframe here. And now we're going to have some weird stuff. So I want this to be linear again. And now we don't have weird stuff here. And now it's good if it's smooth, actually. Um, so yeah, during this, I will make it rotate some more. And until the end, I believe. So I will add it here. And I'm not sure what direction I like better, so I'm just going to check. Yeah, that looks freaking weird. If that's what you're into, good for you. I am not, so I will put it back to zero. And now I should have the other direction of rotation. Yeah, I think that looks cooler. And especially when I go here to the one that are... Oh yeah, wait. I'll go on master and put the crop scale and tilt again. And on here, we can see what that looks like. Yeah. So I think it looks cool. The one thing is there's a big black part here. And so to solve this, I'm going to add a transform effect. The thing is, you're losing resolution, which is why it's not a good method. But I'm not sure how to make it other than have two different projects, one that's a square and then one that's whatever resolution you want. So like for what I'm doing right now, this is fine. So one thing is 265 is not enough. I Since I'm going to zoom in, I want like more action, more stuff. So I'm going to go to like 400 or something. And what I want to make sure of is that I have a full number here, like ha not half of this like this. So I'm going to try to make it like look better. Yeah, that's good. And so I will put the same number for both of them so that it's square. And then I will go to my transform effect here. And I will zoom in, and there's an actual number for this, because it's a square. So I think it might be 170, 177? I'm not sure. Is it? Probably something like that, actually. But now that looks better. Um, you can change the Y to be like centered however you like. I think that might look nice, and so let's just look at it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. The thing is, it's a seamless looping background. And so I want to make it loop. And so I will just copy and paste this if I manage to paste it. Yeah. And you can have as many as you want. And I believe that looks good. 
So, it's been a year. Um, yeah, I actually checked for the first recording. My last video was a year and a few months ago in July. So yeah, it's been a while and a lot happened. Well, not that much. Some happened. The first thing is during the last part of the year, I was writing my PhD thesis. Then I was preparing for my defense and then I defended in January. So now you can call me Dr. Arkengeist. I am a doctor in, I want to say physics. I'm not a doctor in physics, but for brevity purposes, I usually say physics. And after that, I am trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. And one of the things is that I wanted to grow this channel. And I just didn't have inspiration on like videos because I feel like I've made most of what I can do. That's not like redoing the same thing, but differently, but kind of the same way, you know. Um, and like, I feel like this kind of videos can be boring. But at the same time, if it's the first video you search and you find this one and it's the new one, like good for you, you know. And also I was thinking of making tutorials about other softwares that are also open source, but like I'm not as good with them. So I'm not sure it would be that interesting, you know. Like the few times I've used Inkscape, people were like, oh, you should make tutorials on Inkscape. But like, I'm not that good with it, you know. But I've been using it more. Like that's the second thing. I've been making some art and stuff with Inkscape and that's been really fun. Well, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll be back soon. Yeah, bye bye.